Hello and welcome to Lady Dynamite Creates. This is Tiffany and today I'm going to show you how I created Delilah. For this project I decided to use an Ever After High Raven Queen doll. This is the first time I've ever worked with a Ever After High so wish me luck. First thing I do is I prep the doll with cutting the hair and then buzzing it down really short. Then I go ahead and heat the head and pop it off. I use a flathead screwdriver to go ahead and scrape out all of the hair on the inside and I have to say this was the nastiest doll I've ever worked with. There was so much glue and gunk in her head. I don't know if this is normal for the Ever After High dolls but it was nasty. Then I use 100% acetone and take off all of her original face paint and get her all clean. Now she's all ready for some hair and I have pre-prepped some yarn and I use the pulling method that I learned from Dory and the L. I'm going to link that down in the description box below. It's a great technique. It actually reduces waste and I feel like you get longer wefts this way too. I reroute all around the hairline and then down the middle of her part line. And when I do the part, I plug into the hole and then I divide the piece onto either side to create her part. Then for the inner part of her hair, I go ahead and I have made some wefts and I use a little bit of liquid fusion glue and I just glue those down and cover up the head. When I give a doll yarn hair, this is the way I tend to do it most often because I find I cannot figure out just how much hair to give her. I always wind up giving too much and I wind up with just a poofy mess. So I find that if I just reroute the part line and the hairline, I still get that natural hairline, but I also can control the thickness by doing thinner wefts of the head. This is my very first time working on an Ever After High doll, and I have to say, I really like rerouting these heads. They're much harder than the Monster High dolls. See, look at how nice and long that came out. Crazy. Now onto the face up. I used my usual watercolor pencils, plus this time I used some Prolex mica powder. I used the Misty Lavender and True Blue, plus this no-name iridescent blue that I got off of AliExpress, plus my pen pastels. Now starting on this face up is a little bit daunting. The Ever After High faces don't have a very defined eye mold, and so it was a little scary for me at first, and it took me a few tries to get the right eye shape. Eventually I land on a shape that I'm happy with and I proceed on to start adding in the eye creases and I start blushing out the face. I start blushing around the hairline, under the chin, and just around the, the edges of the face and down into the eye sockets. Then I come back and I do a little bit more refining of the eye shadowing in the eye socket and around the nose. do a few passes getting the color just a little bit deeper and then I go in and I blush the apples of the cheek and the forehead. I have to say even though I was so nervous to start this doll it was very daunting but I was so pleased with how easy it was to contour this face. It just turned out nice. Next, I go ahead and give some color to her waterline and to her lips. Then I highlight the forehead, the top of the nose, and the cheeks, and I blend it out. Now I'll go ahead and do some defining to the ears. I shade behind the ears and around it and inside to give it some more depth. Mm -hmm. 
Now go ahead and start filling in the whites of the eyes and I do a couple of passes of this throughout the course of the doll to build up opacity. Next, I go ahead and add in her eyeliner. I'm using a very sharp black pencil. This pencil has a little bit harder lead, so it helps to keep the line very thin. But I use short strokes, and this helps with that as well. And then now I am adding some depth to the waterline by making it darker near the corners. And now my favorite part on this doll, I'm adding in her eyeshadow. I was really pleased with how her eyeshadow turned out, and this purple just really popped with her hair. I highly recommend checking out some makeup tutorials if you're struggling with putting on your eyeshadow on your dolls. It really helped me out just looking at the way different artists applied their eyeshadow. Honestly, I cannot apply my own eyeshadow half as good as I can do it on dolls. I highly recommend these little applicator brushes. I got them off Amazon. They're great for applying eyeshadow on the dolls and just, of course, you know, Q-tips to blend it out. And now I'm going to add in her eyebrows. Took me a little while to get a shape that I was happy with, but after some finagling, I finally got there. I just used the pastels to shape them and then an eraser to refine them a little more. So here I add a little bit more color to her lips and then I'm highlighting the brow bone and blending that out. I also highlight the inner corners of her eyes and right underneath her eyes. Typically those areas on the face have a little bit more of a bluish hint to it, so I'm using a slightly more blue-white. Then I use a black pencil and darken up her nostrils. I decided I wanted her eyeshadow to have a little bit of a transition to some pink, so I'm adding in a little bit of pink right up against the purple. Then I go ahead and start adding in her irises, and I get my initial iris shape defined before I move on and block in some color. At this point, I'm very happy with the way she's looking. I love her expression. My daughter even told me that she looks like an adult who is just tired of everyone acting like children all the time. Here you can see I am darkening up her eyeliner and then I'm taking a brown, not quite a black, but it's a very dark brown and darkening up the outside edge of the waterline. Then I'm taking a very deep blue and giving her eyes a little bit more dimension because I didn't feel like those lighter shades of blue pushed it far enough. And again, I have another pass of white on the sclera. So here I've decided to really define the eyelid crease in her eye and I color in with a little bit of black pencil and I take a colorless blender pencil and I've blended that out. And then I go in with some darker pastel as well and deepen it some more. And of course another pass of darkening the eyeliner. Next, I'm starting to add in some of the detail lines to the lips, and I use a little bit of brown directly off the pencil to deepen the lip crease as well.
Now I'm going to add in some of the individual hairs to the eyebrows and try not to mess it up, but I did have to erase these several times before I was happy. I'm using a little bit of black pastel to shade the eye and give it some shadow where the eyelid would shade it. Then I am detailing out with some tiny flicks and a dark blue pencil for the iris. Now I'm going to give her some eyelashes. I start with my hardest pencil and I do some quick little flicks to give her lower lashes in. And then I decided I wanted her to have some beauty marks and so I give her random ones all over her face. And then I add in her top lashes. I do just like with the bottom and I start with my hardest lead pencil and I draw in the lashes I want and then I go back in with a softer leaded pencil and uh, darken the bases of them. I decided I needed a little bit more contrast in her eyes so I went back in with a white watercolor pencil and added some more details. It was at this point that I felt like she was just missing something. She needed a little extra oomph. And I know I'd seen other artists use mica powder, so I decided to give them a try. And so I was going to use it on her eyeshadow and in her iris. And then I just went crazy and started putting it everywhere. And I really loved how this iridescent blue highlighted her cheeks and forehead. And right before I sprayed her for her final time, I added in her catch lights and all the little highlights right around her waterline. So now I go ahead and get the body prepped for some body blushing. I take an X-Acto blade and I scrape down some of the bigger seams on the body. And I sand and sand and sand and sand and sand. Now once I've sanded off all of that glossy top, I go ahead and get her cleaned up and wait for her to dry and give her a spray of MSC. Once the MSC is dry, I can start blushing her body with the same colors I've blushed her face with. I just tend to blush any areas with darker colors that are going to be in shadows, like under her arms, uh, under her boobs, things like that on her sides. But then her joints, I tend to blush a little bit pinker. And then I do take care to detail right around her collarbone and deepen that out. And I have to say, I really love the sculpting on the bodies of the Ever After High dolls. They are beautiful. And I really wish that the Monster High had a similar body shape. I don't like the swaybacks on those. Then I go ahead and I make sure to detail her uh, hands and the tendons in the hands on the tops. And I do this on the feet as well. And here's where I'm going to cut off. I'm not going to show any more of this because I go in and add nipples. And I know YouTube doesn't like nipples, so I'm going to leave that. But I do add those, and then I blush her again with the mica powder on the tops of her chest with the iridescent color. 
Her dress was a little bit of trial and error. I started out making the skirt portion of it and I do a circle skirt and I lengthen one side of the pattern to give it a train and I get that cut out of my main fabric and I get two layers of tulle cut out as well. Then I go ahead and I baste all three layers together and then I add a waistband to it. And when I add my waistband, I sew right sides together, then I flip it over and then I stitch in a ditch. Then I stitch up the back, leaving a space big enough for her to get through, and I leave the tool separate and do them at their own layer so they're not trapped into the big layer of the back. For the top portion of the dress, the original one I made I was not happy with, so off camera I made another one, and it's just made out of tool. I decided to embellish the top with this lace trim. It kind of fit perfectly with the shape, and I cut the piece I want out and heat sear the edges with the lighter. Next, I take a bit of hem tape and I put it directly onto the embellishment. This helps it to stay in place so I can tack it fully on. And last minute, I decided to complete this look with a little bit of dip dyeing to the bottom of the dress. I felt like it set it off nicely with the personality the doll had. And then she's all done. I just wanted to thank you all for watching this video. If you'll please like and subscribe. 